Right. Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, a big welcome to everyone to our uh, monthly patient blood management session here at the uh, G Echo uh, on the G Echo I Echo platform. It is really, really uh, great to have all of you here. And uh, we are a more intimate group today. But what I've learned is that it's often a single or a few people that can change a whole region, can change a country, can change the lives of, of tens of thousands of patients. And um, I've never, ever been to any one of these meetings that I did not learn something that was very useful. So I really hope and trust that today will, will be similar for every single one of you that are here. Um, it gives me great pleasure to um, welcome everybody from all around Sub-Saharan Africa that is joining us today. I want to give a special word of thanks to our ECHO team, uh, New Mexico, the um, ECHO team in India, to Chris Cassianides, who's one of, uh, well, probably the driving force behind G ECHO, uh, to Karen Fenton, to Cheryl Valentine, everybody that helps to make these sessions possible. Um, and also uh, specifically Aditi, um, from uh, Echo in India that's with us today. So without further ado, we have the pleasure to have Dr. Freddy Kabambi, an anesthesiologist from the Nelson Mandela Academic Hospital and Walter Sassoula University with us. And Freddy has uh, done incredible work in terms of PBM implementation. One of the most difficult parts of PBM to actually do is to implement it and get it running and successfully running. And um, uh, Freddie has, uh, has, has also become involved with the World Health Organization Patient Blood Management Strategic uh, Committee. And uh, it's a place where he's made some wonderful contributions also representing uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. So Freddie, wonderful to have you. Welcome. Thank you for um, being so excited to to come and share with us what you know. I know a little bit. I look forward to get the um, extended version. And uh, over to you. You're welcome to share your screen and uh, give us what you got. OK, really, uh, thank you, Vernon. It's always a pleasure to be welcomed by you um, because it's such an honor for me as a individual and uh, also as uh, someone trying to implement uh, patient blood management here because uh, you are one of those people we look up to uh, when we want to do anything. So really it's a real pleasure. Also real pleasure to meet friends and colleagues throughout uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, just a brief introduction. Uh, as um, Vernon said, I'm here from Walter Sisulu, Nelson Mandela Academic Hospital. And uh, yeah, I'm called bilingual because I'm originally from the Democratic Republic of Congo. So yeah, I'm really happy to be with you here today. So uh, to start, I was requested to, to share something, and I felt, what can I share in this world of implementation of PBM, uh, um, where you have so many um, big head in the world, what can it be that we can uh, say or do uh, that will be of any uh, um, use to anyone here? So I feel like let me just be original and talk from heart what we've, uh, we've done here uh, so that we can learn from you on, on which steps we did not do well or also we can uh, share what we did so it can be also um, a uh, word of uh, encouragement for those who need to go this way. So, disclaimer, the experience that I will, I will try to share today 
is just as a, from a tiny point in Africa, in the Eastern Cape, South Africa. So it's not a, a representation of what is, uh, is happening, but we feel that it's a, a point that we can merge with others to make our common story, our common experience. So also another big uh, disclaimer is that, that this experience that I'm sharing with you today is not, is not its first in South Africa. We have been inspired by the work done in Edendale Hospital in Peter Marisberg with uh, the team of uh, Dr. Rob Wise. So we are really grateful for the uh, support at the early stage of our uh, uh, endeavor. As I will say, as I, I, again, I have no conflict in interest in whatever I say here. Thank you. So the, uh, that being said, if, if any objective I want to achieve uh, during this uh, um, presentation here, you just to tell a story and to put it in a context, in a global context, and reflect on the way we, 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 we've done and on a way that others who are willing to do can really uh, take. But it's not really a, a prescription. Uh, it's not really a, 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 a take it out or leave it. In. So something may not fit in some other people context. Uh, it's, we are really happy to collaborate. To start, uh, colleagues, just let me show you this graph. This graph just shows the, <clears throat> the trend in PB, the growth in publication PBM as indexed by PubMed. You can see how it has gone from almost as everyone and from 26, 2010, it has been really exponential growth in terms of publication. To tell really, it's really, really evolving the field that we are in. And uh, it's really interesting to live in this era where you can see there is really taking off worldwide. But also I have this habit myself to encourage our guys here uh, where we sit in Umtata to do this quite a dirty, quick search in PubMed. And um, what I wanted to do, you know, I um, lately here, just yesterday, I tried it again. Uh, for any uh, paper that uh, take question blood management as a title or abstract, you see the heat there. When you compare it, uh, you, you combine it with implementation, that's the heat. But when you put Africa on top of it, it's there. I know it's very quick, it's quick and dirty. Uh, it cannot really be uh, said as truth, but it may not be far from the truth as well. To say uh, that uh, as Africa, as Sub Saharan Africa, we are still not telling our story, which it will be uh, for sure different from the story that is being uh, uh, said from the first world countries. By the way, uh, when on two of these three paper that uh, were, were the results here, you were a cohort of it. Just to say that uh, you are really have a legend with us today. So I know one thing that I'm speaking to the choir or people who are really invested in PBM. So it's not a, a lecture today on what is PBM, but uh, let me just share this uh, definition. This Lately, uh, the global definition of PBM. That's it. PBM is a patient-centered, systematic, evidence-based approach to improve patient, patient outcome by managing and preserving a patient's own blood while promoting patient safety. Here, what really struck me is just patient outcome. So everything is done to really uh, uh, the focus is patient outcome, not really product. We are really uh, uh, grateful because this shift 
is really attributed to or the system uh, PBM to Prof. James Edison from Australia, who brought it. And I will not, uh, sorry, go further because we all are aware, or for those who are not aware, that PBM is sitting in three pillars. The first one is uh, uh, optimizing uh, erythropoiesis. The second, to minimize blood loss and bleeding. And uh, the third is optimizing uh, patient uh, um, reserves or uh, harnessing tolerance to anemia. I put this because I will reflect on this very important uh, uh, aspect here when I will uh, reflect on our uh, journey. But of note, we need to give a uh, uh, tribute to also Prof, uh, to Dayton Kuli, who is uh, said to be the forefather of a principle, a PBM principle, with his work with the Jehovah Witness in cardiac surgery. He really is a pioneer in this, uh, especially in the field of uh, blood surgery that is suited to, to be mainly uh, uh, patient blood management. So when it comes to implementation, you cannot talk really about implementation without mentioning the Australians, because they are the one who really came with uh, this big study to, to show that PBM is worth uh, 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 they are being uh, put on the map. So but when it comes to implementation, you have this uh, mainly, if you see studies on implementation of PBM, you will see many, many of the studies are hospital based. So take a PBM in the context of the whole hospital or even system of hospital, where many hospitals in a system they are uh, they, they, they be studied and in specific uh, settings like uh, PBM and in obstetrics, PBM in, in uh, um, orthopedics that has been really widely used. So PBM in cardiac. So basically uh, that's what you see. Just a few examples that this is the, the first study by the uh, Australian team 2014. You can already see the trend after implementation of PBM that there was a, a trend in, in decreasing on all these uh, uh, parameters, blood, red cell, platelet, cryoprecipitate, and um, overall patient admission. And a follow-up study uh, uh, a few years later comprising uh, many more hospitals confirmed. You can see the same trend is being confirmed. But this was a landmark study, and then many of those people who are investing in PBM know it in and out. But over note lately, you can see the trend still uh, uh, showing up here, the German study, which almost twice the size of the, uh, uh, of the Australian uh, study, and uh, also on, uh, it was restricted, but on prospectively collected data, has shown this uh, the same trend in overall uh, uh, total uh, transfusion rate and also the transfused unit. PBM uh, here uh, is worked, but you can see here 14 hospitals from four to 14, and then the, uh, even the number uh, has been up. Of note as well, that's what uh, uh, interested me, interested me because uh, of our setting in South Africa, not all the hospitals are, the, are on the same level. Um, here, this study in US, in USA, so it's a complex set of, of, of hospitals where you have academic, even community hospitals all together. Uh, and then the, 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 the message across is still quite the same that PBM over time is uh, the, the metrics are showing that uh, uh, it's what. So really, uh, but here also to say about uh, some specific cases, which I will not do that much because um, of, uh, as I will speak later about our uh, setup here. But I wanted to show that there are many studies that they, uh, they be conducted, but I also think the best way 
for me even to take this summary uh, at the end. It just by showing you this uh, systematic review meta analysis that show that you know um, studies of PBM implementation that took the three pillars, uh, at least one me uh, one uh, measure in each pillar, and see how it it works. It shows clearly. Um, I'm got. Uh, um, I'm sorry for this uh, busy slide, yeah, but. One can see exactly that uh, when it comes to number of patients exposed to allogenic blood pressure, it favors PBM. I just took two of this here, and here as well, in terms of a uh, number of complications, is also is a favor, clear favor for PBM with uh, confidence interval not crossing one. But my talk today is about the challenge encountered in a process here. One would uh, think, as I've gone through all this uh, uh, review in, in literature, that one was really uh, knowledgeable of uh, what PBM was. And then uh, while starting, you had all the uh, uh, um, tools to start well. As you go, you see that it was not really the case in our setup here. And uh, as we started, as we reflect these days, uh, some measure, some stuff we could have done better if we knew. So, but before going further in terms of uh, uh, challenge, I wanted to know, is there any report to challenge? Because sometimes when you, you encounter challenge, you have, this idea that it's only you, and it's really depressing in a setting like this one here, when you are really vigorous, you want to uh, apply it, but you see the resistance, you feel like it's you the problem, that you are not uh, up to the task. So I wanted to find, find out what is the challenge report in the literature, is there any challenge report in the literature, and uh, in terms of barrier and facilitators. Uh, in that, whom to the um, to, to the rescue? As I think, uh, this paper was when yourself you were among the the um, the co-authors came to share a bit light on uh, it, and I will reflect on um, some of these uh, uh, challenges and accelerator to to see how it played a role uh, in our in, in our case here, uh, knowingly or not unknowingly, but it's uh, many of those uh, played quite a role. As you can see, this people really wanted to describe the status quo of the implementation and also find out the way to synthesize information uh, on the uh, challenges or accelerated inhibitors of uh, implementation of patient blood management. Of note, what really interesting here, what I really I like about this paper because uh, the, um, the interviewees are just not people from the uh, first world country. So some of these challenges or some of this uh, accelerator that as the, the, the point here, it really talked to us in our setup here in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. So if we want to zoom now in Nelson Mandela Academy Hospital, where I practice. We are in the Eastern Cape, in the northeastern region of Eastern Cape, from uh, uh, Transkei. What I would say uh, is it this setup here a resource constrained area? We can debate, but uh, uh, we happen to be uh, one of the poorest districts in South Africa, and the level of poverty is quite high here. Uh, because the latest census is almost 64 percent of the population here really live uh, on the, uh, under the stress of poverty here. It's really uh, something that we see commonly in our setup. So as I said, one will say that, okay, all this uh, it was known in with uh, PBM, so you are lucky to start uh, on, uh, on a shoot of giants. 
But our encounter with pigeon was really atypical. Atypical in the sense that it was, as I always like to say, it is a, a, a paper bag that triggered. It was a paper bag, uh, blood um, delivered in theater in a paper bag. I was quite unhappy that um, they would uh, deliver blood in this way, just to find out that it was really just the tip of the iceberg. A, a culture of uh, uh, um, wastage was really uh, this, this set up here. And I was quite uh, thrown into this deep end because I was the one to raise the issue. They say, hey, by the way, we have this problem here because you seem interested. Can you solve it? But as I said before, uh, and I'll, I'll do it uh, later on here, just a few statistics we could say that uh, on average 90% 90, 90 of FFP orders were never collected. The, uh, the tap and screen, the conversion rate was so low that the hospital was losing uh, too much money on this. And the cancellation, almost 2 million. Uh, uh, just on the charge of cancellation for the hospital, two million rand. And because it was this knee jerk reaction uh, on ordering blood, so people were ordering emergency on when, even when there was no need for emergency blood because there was no guidance. You can tell now with this setup already for us we were PBM or managing, it was about blood management to, uh, uh, to curve this uh, expenditure here. So our focus was on um, pillar three to try to reduce this. But also I must uh, make a disclaimer, it was not that, the, the other thing was that we did not even know PBM per se. So we did a deliberate choice to focus on this one, but for us, this was the only thing that we knew about uh, uh, PBM at that time. With this little, and this also ignorance, uh, whether well, I can say, but in a, not in a negative way, but we embarked and we, with the help of uh, uh, Australian um, Blood Authority, they allowed us to uh, uh, update the guidelines, and uh, also colleagues here locally. We came together as a team, multiple multidisciplinary team, uh, comprising everyone, nursing doctors from all the, uh, the discipline. We, we managed to get uh, a consensus to get this uh, document here. And also with uh, the help of uh, the Edendale team, we, they helped us, we, took their accountability form and then we uh, we made it uh, our own in, to, to, to suit our, uh, our, our setup. And as you can see here, these are almost the, the summary of our guidelines. But we revised it also last year. Uh, we, we maybe as new evidence arises, we'll still revising it as well. So, this a bit was the, the timeline. You can see many of the studies that I told you were, uh, were, uh, were published before, even we, uh, we started the journey here, but we were just not aware of its existence. So, uh, yeah. so for us, it was about decreasing blood utilization. And that's it, uh, uh, harnessing uh, uh, tolerance to anemia. All this, we did it in that sense. And among the facilitator that uh, on a paper that I sent you here, it was when we reflect is uh, publication of local data is of importance to the implementation because it gives people faith that what they do is important. Unknowingly, but we focused also on uh, collecting data. This is uh, so we created a database based on our accountability form to collect data so that we can be able to tell the story to the people because there were a lot of resistance. 
you can imagine in a setup this way, people have been doing things the, the, the same way. No, uh, no encounter with PBM, it was quite uh, difficult to convince anyone. But this one, we also with, with data uh, uh, from um, Sunburst, the South African National Blood uh, Service, it, we, it, we were able to show lo local data because most of the time when you start implementation of this kind of a, a project, because it's, uh, it takes people from their comfort zone, they tell you the data that you're telling us are, are done in America, in Europe. They don't talk to us. Ah, we have our own uh, 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 story here. We have our own specificity. So you need to talk the, the same language with them with local data. That's how we can really make any uh, 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 impact. So we tried that and we could show, but this is just a summary, that when it comes to uh, monthly blood uh, 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 utilization, you can see how it has dropped from the pre-adoption era to the post-adoption era. When it comes to FFP, little drop, and uh, let let the same, but of not cry precipitate went up. But which also was also we predicted it because uh, people really did not know about uh, uh, cry precipitate, especially for uh, obstetric hemorrhage. And we have a serious problem of obstetric hemorrhage in this region here. Yeah. Now, when it comes to tap and screen, you can tell is this the uh, our biggest uh, uh, achievement so far because it was just a matter of, of wastage as well that this we could do. But one thing though we we struggled and uh, we can say we failed uh, if we can say this way is single use policy. It's never really. We never really achieved to go uh, beyond 30 and uh, 40. I know in, uh, in, uh, in first world countries, uh, Australia, they have uh, up to 60, but here we struggled. I once was even talking with the uh, um, trolleys about this. Okay, maybe on the top we can uh, uh, discuss about it, but we, um, we there's a, a thing that um, those numbers is difficult for in our setting to get to these uh, uh, numbers as a portrait in literature. Okay. This, all this we've made here, as I said, we were not even aware that we were just part of uh, one pillar. It's when we have this event here, and then we invited uh, kindly uh, uh, Axel. Then when he showed us, I said, no, 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 uh, I see that, yeah, we, you guys are, are, are focused on this. It's, this was like a, a bulb, uh, uh, light bulb moment for us as well. That, no, okay, we've done well, but there's still room for more. Because uh, we could see that now we have just, what we saw as a whole was just part of uh, a bigger uh, uh, reality as well. What, or the other thing is to find allies when you want to implement uh, PBM in your, in your setup. To, uh, finding allies here, that was quite easy for us to do because at the beginning, being an anesthetist, we are used to work with other colleagues. So it was quite easy to, to connect with uh, people. I, I couldn't tell that this thing here, you run it as a departmental project, you are bound to fail. Uh, getting everyone at the same uh, 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 room is also difficult, but there was no other way to do it. So team spirit helped a lot because not only we have doctors, nurses, we really uh, uh, at all corner. We didn't really uh, break the, uh, the hierarchy and that helped us to, uh, it was slow because a lot of the uh, discussion, but it, it helped as you can see also on, on the result. It was also about training. Uh, we did a lot of training. Uh, we could, uh, we focused on training interns uh, about the guidelines that we uh, for because they are the main uh, prescribers on the ground. 
we could we also did roadshows to uh, to uh, to share this with the uh, colleagues it had uh, impact positive in a negative i will uh, uh, dwell on, on that data so this kind of uh, roadshow it was really good and it, it helps to spread the, the message that if we did not do these two things, the team, uh, the multidisciplinary approach and this uh, uh, education program, I don't think we could have achieved anything. As I can say, the, lo the road for PBN Mutata was a still a long journey. So we cannot even say that we are there. You can see we are really far from being really perfect uh, uh, case example. Challenge. Uh, <clears throat> our biggest challenge, I'll say, funding. We have uh, uh, a support from the management, but mainly verbal. Uh, there is no, uh, you, you can see to maintain even the database that we have here to go through, we would like to have at least if an, an admin clock, but we, we do not do, we do not have. We just, the zeal, that's uh, still uh, uh, perpetrating uh, this uh, work here. And to, on top of that, to have people dedicated to this work here, so in a hospital big like this one, you need more time off. We do not have that because we are all uh, consulted, uh, our doctors in the department, especially in my department, is very depleted. So it's really uh, a big uh, uh, challenge to get to do this. And uh, in our colleagues taking this old practice, you, you may be familiar with this uh, old professor syndrome. It's difficult to convince uh, people that it's time to change, especially when you tell people to change in less, to do less. Doctors are really uh, fast forward. When you tell them, do this, do extra this, do this, do this, give this. So when you tell them to not to give, they feel like uh, you are, uh, depleting them of their uh, 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 skills. So it's difficult. And also every changing environment, you can see uh, this is uh, an academic hospital, the patient hospital, the turnover is uh, really hard. It's something to recruit people to uh, so that we can keep this going. To finish, after all this, what lessons are uh, personally then I would like to share with what we learned. So we started this journey with, I would say today, lack of knowledge. What made us focus in one pillar? Because we thought that was it. Um, this, uh, with time, has reached saturation. And we know that to make more uh, uh, room, we need this change of uh, attitude, especially in terms of uh, investigation of anemia, treating anemia. Uh, of note to tell you our own uh, um, pilot project that we, we did here in the hospital, the um, prevalence of preoperative anemia in our hospital is the 52%. This data that we are about to publish soon. Yes. That was a, uh, this second one was quite a, uh, a tricky for me, differential ad ad adoption per department. It, it come to uh, this accelerator that really in the paper is uh, making friends, making a team. As you try to go to implement, you'll get people who adopt you or adopt the change easily and those who adopt the change, but and, uh, not so easily. For us, it was quite a shock. We thought, <laughs> as we tell people, it's so easy. You have the data from elsewhere. You also start producing data from local that you people can just only uh, uh, adopt and go. But this was not. If I had time, I could also show that I can see two departments here. One department where the HOD much involved. In fact, we became really friends with this and the other department where really, you know, not that they are against, but now not much, but we can see the difference in terms of uh, uh, the result. 
Okay. We also learned that you know, when you come, when you talk about key opinion leaders, uh, the default will say the head, the head of department. If you get the the uh, uh, head of department, you are you are you are fine, or the head of any area where you you in. But we learned the hard way that uh, sometimes the the elephant in the room is not the head of the department. You may have this consultant sitting in a corner there but he's the most influential guy in the department. That if he's not on board, and then you are uh, just in trouble. Bottom up, uh, up bottom approach to implementation of uh, PBN. We thought in the beginning that just training uh, the bottom people, MO intern would, 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 would make it, but we had to reverse our cut in uh, uh, um, midway that combining the two will give you better results then and some target as I said well, just difficult this uh um, single unit policy is the most publicized uh, uh, um, item here in the hospital but we're struggling to get it and the last I said in the poor interns I learned that, the, uh, yes, we load them with all the uh, bad stuff, but they become uh, bad or good as they pass through department. The same group here, they were good in terms of uh, 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 adhering to the guidelines. When they move to another department, they become bad. So I found that, you know, sometimes, they are not the, 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 the real uh, culprit. It's about the consultants in the unit, the senior, because they are just laborers. So a bit of a uh, picture from, from the Drakensberg. And then that's my references. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Really, <clears throat> thank you so, so much. I think your presentation is so relevant to the environments that many of us come from. I think many times people think that, you know, PBM implementation is something that works in Australia and Germany and, and uh, Switzerland. But you've shown that this can be done very successfully, like uh, Rob Wise has also shown in, in, in areas that are often under-resourced, where costs uh, are greatly constrained, etc., so thank you for sharing this. And I'd like to really invite anybody to, if you've got a question for, for um, Freddie, please speak up or put it in the chat box. It'd be lovely to hear from you. Um, <clears throat> it seems to me, and it's, this is a very interesting phenomenon, that the most useful PBM tool in the, um, in our, well, I, I think it's not been tested elsewhere, but in the South African setting is this blood accountability form. You know, it's such a low-hanging fruit. It costs nothing in terms of money. It, it does cost a lot of effort in, in terms of training the people and auditing the things and so on. But the awareness that surrounds it and the the fact that people are, um, that it's compulsory to fill in the form and that you see it every day, over and over and over again. Very soon, all your interns and your doctors are going to know these indications. So you are actually training with that form. You're saving huge amounts of money. Um, I think it's really great. Even if one starts implementing it in one department, uh, just start somewhere. Did you start um, with a whole hospital simultaneously, or did you start department by department? Yeah, um, on our side, that was the uh, uh, debate that uh, um, while preparing it was really a huge debate, as you, you, you can tell, there was mainly two groups. Uh, some said it's a suicidal to go, the whole hospital as a, as a go, we should go by department by department, and uh, some um, as among those others who said no, we need to go uh, uh, all together. So at the end of the day, we agreed that we need to go to from uh, to all the department at a go. 
our reasoning was, should you go one department to the department, first it's gonna take long to, to reach the whole hospital. And it also, the, um, the, uh, the resistance, rather face them all together once, and we deal with it as we go, then to go uh, step by step. So that's, we, we went straight, all the department. All the whole hospital, impressive. Yeah. yeah. How many beds did you say your hospital has? Um, 580 beds. 580 is a big place. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, uh, Dr. Jenny Hull uh, asks, do you have blood and returnable basis boxes in Antarctica? Yes, we do have uh, this uh, also uh, area where we we did also well at the beginning, but we are struggling now. Mm. Uh, the this what triggered you see this paper uh, uh, envelope that I, I told you is what triggered that you no know, no we need to have uh, this BRB in, in place here. We implemented it. But now the change that we have now is in terms of porters uh, not doing the job because there's also uh, not so many. And there's but, uh, um, some loss, but we agree with the uh, the, the local team in uh, San Brescia to order more and then to make uh, the nursing at the, the, uh, the wards more responsible and the department also more responsible for that. Yeah, we do. Right. How, how did you convince people to do less uh, types and screens? Ah, okay, that's also something that uh, uh, when I reflect on um, <clears throat> on our journey, uh, we have two of the measures, and uh, I always my but I will also have to 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 get your uh, your opinion idea. We did well as a uh, as a hospital as a, or as a committee on the measure that we took as sort of like a dictatorial type of uh, 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 approach. We said, from now on, uh, type a screen, no. You want to, uh, 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 to transfuse, make up your idea. You go for it and, 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 and not. When it comes to now, uh, other measures like a type, uh, uh, um, like a single unit policy, we were not that much of a, a, a prescriptive. Uh, that one is going the way uh, I've shown you, but this one is, is we didn't give any choice to anyone. Right. Do you have anything on your blood accountability form about? A uh, single unit orders are preferred, or anything like that. I'm just thinking about it now. I can't remember that Rob Wise had it, but that might be yeah. interesting, as if one mm -hmm. could put it in a little block, I guess, on the top, to say that, it, or you know, where you've got red blood cells. Or, or do you have something like that? Uh, uh, also, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Let me just check to see exactly if. Uh... Sorry, uh, you can go ahead as I'm checking on that. So Jenny asks. No, we, no, we, uh, we, uh, we just, um, we, there's a box on BRBs and comments, but we do not have really uh, a box to say. Uh, uh, um, single unit is preferred. We had separate uh, advert hmm. throughout the hospital to advertise single unit policy, that people okay. should uh, 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 do that more. Yeah, okay, it was not responsibility for me. Yeah. Great. Uh, Jenny asks, I thought type and screen was cheaper than blood on standby. Can you comment? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. In our setting, I gave you the, 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 the setup here that the type and screen the conversion rate was only 14%. So that was uh, um, money that was charged to the hospital. And then uh, blood on standby, we do not uh, also advocate for blood on standby. 
if you want to, uh, to transfuse, you go straight uh, along the way. So it's not uh, uh, you uh, you cross match and then you keep it there, but people still uh, do so. But that or, uh, is not uh, what we are, are advocated. Yeah. Okay, no, great. I heard uh, it sounded earlier like somebody wanted to ask a question. Um, please do. If you want to speak up, you're so welcome. Let's see if there's anybody unmuted. The other, the other thing I noted, uh, and I wanted to ask if you had a specific reason for doing so, was um, I know on Rob Wise's form, he added the price of the blood products next to each where you order it on the mm -hmm. left side of the page. Um, did you spe Was there a reason why you decided to take the price off? Um, no, there's no reason per se, because uh, if I'm I'm not mistaken, the copy that we, we, we received from him, uh, we did not have that uh, element on this. So we went through it not uh, knowing that uh, that was an option as well. Okay. But saying okay. that uh, there's something that uh, need to be uh, thought of is a good thing. Yeah, yeah I think it's uh, it, it sort of uh, reminds everyone... Uh, how much a unit of blood actually costs. So quite yeah. impressive. And I think it's especially the junior staff to um, to really become aware, you know, why we're saying what we're saying. So it's a, it's a good motivator. Money, money is a good motivator in Africa and low-income countries. I think there's a lot of austerity measures going on, and there's so much money that could be saved by PBM that could be allocated elsewhere to more important things, you know, um, or other important things uh, rather than, than being wasted here. And it's, it's interesting. I went to donate blood yesterday. And when you donate blood, you think about these things completely differently. So I was like yeah. sitting there, my blood was going out and the, you know, I'm thinking, I hope, I really hope some doctor is not going to waste my blood. You know? Because yeah. that's a reality. We know from our own studies, we know that 50% of platelets in a large university hospital that we studied in South Africa, 50% of the platelets given were given completely unnecessarily, mm -hmm. inappropriately. And if you think about uh, a leukodepleted pool or an apheresis unit, we're talking about 11,000, 12,000 rands per, mm -hmm. per unit. Mm -hmm. per unit and um, it's a massive cost and, and all of us are obviously paying for this through our taxes we're not doing anybody in the country a service and we certainly we know with the, the complications associated with many of these things we're certainly not doing our patients a service um, I was at SABM this weekend the end of last week in, in uh, Nashville and it was interesting how someone commented that um, he was in a unit where they applied PBM very strictly and they used very little FFP mm -hmm. and they almost never saw white lungs after giving um, after, after, after their uh, management of patients where they rather give cryo and other, all the other things that were very focused by TEGS, you know, thromboelastography mm -hmm. and so on. Yes. And then he moved to a, another hospital where they were not doing PBM and they were seeing white lungs in the ICU all the time. These things have real impacts on patients and it's fantastic to see what you've done. Congratulations. Um, I hope, what's your next step, uh, Freddie? What is your next, what is your next, will you tell us about next year? What are you aiming for? Uh, we are focused really now to, uh, uh, to bring a pillar one because that's a low hanging fruit. Okay, pre-optimization. Pre yeah, pre-optimization, because uh, we're still struggling with people. It's quite, so, uh, uh, quite embarrassing to say it, uh, but people treating anemia with transfusion, hmm. where they, uh, you, you can really uh, avoid it. So this got um, um, what certain us a lot. So that's our focus now. To really help. No, fantastic. And I think that's going to improve. I see Wayne, uh, Dr. Wayne Simmons uh, from Free State is in the audience. Uh, 
Wayne's uh, just led the team on uh, drafting guidelines for gastroenterology and, and, and PBM and iron management. And uh, that has been accepted for publication by the SAMJ. So we hope, will hopefully be out soon. We're working on the Ops and Gyne one at the moment. So there's all sorts of lovely things happening. I know the anesthesiology guideline, for those who don't know, is already out there. It's been published. Um, you can look it up. Rob Wise is the first author of that. And there's also one on critical care that's out and published. So I think South Africa is moving. And it's uh, maybe one step at a time. But you've already shown that you can save millions of rands in a short period of time. And I think it should be a motivation. It is a motivation to me. I'm, um, I've am i WhatsApped Rob now while you were speaking. I'm so excited. I said to him, you must help us that we can do what you've done in Grote Skier. So well done, Freddie. Okay. If there are no further questions or comments, let me just double check in the chat box. Please uh in the chat box you'll see a link if you can just give us some feedback on the session would be much appreciated and uh, then just once again a big thank you to uh, Freddie for the efforts and for sharing his experience to the ECHO University of New Mexico and ECHO India teams I want to remind you that recordings of these sessions are available on the Gastro Foundation website thank you to the Gastro Foundation thanks Chris um, thanks to our sponsors Everybody involved, Karen, Cheryl, who's been helping uh, to get this uh, happening today. We really appreciate your help. And we look forward to seeing you at the next one. I think this is the last PBM session for the year. Am I not mistaken, Karen? Karen's still around? Sorry, I'm not sure, Vernon. I, I don't know the schedule in my head. I'll have to go and double check, but I think this is the last one for the year. And we will probably meet again next year. And I think we've had a great year with wonderful presenters. So it's a good way to end. Thanks, Freddie. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for making the time and for supporting these sessions every month. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.